Hello everyone, I'm really lucky this evening to be joined by Gordon Boffin. Hello Gordon. Evening John. Thanks very much for giving up your, your, your time this evening. Uh, you've agreed to come on and chat to us about um, Flyball. You're obviously the, the captain of Banbury Cross Flyball Club, is that right? Yeah, I am, yeah. Fantastic. I mean, we were just saying there that you guys are super busy at the moment. We are unbelievably busy. It's every weekend, constant. That's brilliant. You um, you sent me some videos over, actually, which hopefully we can just in insert now. So this was taken a week or so ago, I believe, at the Banbury show as a demonstration. I mean, the agility and speed of these dogs is just incredible. And the coordination of the starters as well is uh, it's really, really impressive stuff. Oh, I think it might be a blue lane. Absolutely. Perfect timing going off the, over the jump the jumps as well. What, oh, one went down there. Absolutely incredible. However, it's not particularly in a dangerous position. And you know that the thing is, just the the athleticism of the dogs is is incredible. Watching them do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. the speed I, I they mean, achieve. It's, it's it's any breed that can do it as well. Oh really? It's not just a specific breed. It's not just border collies. We have Labradors do it. Labradoodles. We've even got a um, long haired Chihuahua that's just started. <laughs> really. Going, really yeah, thought. and do they go into different classes then, or how does that work? Well, what we do, we 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 can start the dogs at six months old, uh -huh. but we're not allowed to put them over jumps until they're twelve months old. So what we do, we put them down a netted lane to work on the recall and the retrieval. Right. Once they hit once they hit twelve months old, they go into starters, and it's still a netted lane. But then, then we introduce the jumps. Right. Okay. Okay. So, the, the, um, so how, with, with regards to the training, how do you encourage them to go over the jumps and you know rather than go around them and things like that? Is it part of the dog's breeding, or are you looking for a certain type of dog to do it? Sorry, I didn't hear that bit. Sorry. Uh, are you looking for? A, is it in the dog's breeding, or are you looking for a certain? Or can any dog do it with the right kind of training? Any, any, any dog can do it. Really? Um, it's not just a case of retrieval of a tennis ball. Mm -hmm. We will, we'll, we will introduce something that they really like. Right. It could be. Pink fluffy cuddly toy. Right. <laughs> it could be um, a Velcro um, treat ball. Uh -huh. yeah, to put yeah. the treats in, they would treat that. Yeah. Then, in, then eventually we do introduce the tennis ball. Right. Okie dokie. So it's something that they're really they're really motivated by, I guess. Yeah. Okay. What's, yeah. What... I mean, a lot. We find we find some of the breeds are more motivated by food. Some of the breeds, it's just the tennis ball. They're tennis ball obsessed. A lot of the border collies are tennis ball obsessed. Yeah. A lot of the Labradors, when they start, are more food obsessed. I mean, lo looking at those videos, the dogs are obviously loving it. It looks like it's, yeah. you know, high energy, high excitement. Yeah. Uh, what we do, we, we try to make it enjoyable for them as well, though. Right. Yeah. Um, we, it's, it's positive reinforcement. Right. We get them... We get them to enjoy it, we get the handlers to enjoy it, and we get the handler and the dogs to have that special bond. Right, yeah, yeah. Are they are they working for the play drive or are they working for the owner? What 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 do you think it is there that that, that gets them doing it? Sorry, I didn't hear that bit. Um so are they working for the owner or is it just purely like play for them? It's both it's both. It's both. They want to bring that ball or the treat toy or the teddy bear back to the owner. They they they're doing their job. Right. We try to make it so that the dogs, when they enter that fly ball ring or the training ring, they are doing a job. Right. Okay. Uh, we find some of the dogs want to play about with the other dogs. We try to stop that so that they know as soon as they step into that ring, they're there to do it. They're there to do their job. Right. Okay. Okay. So, what sort of age do you take dogs from there? Uh, six months old for the puppy training, mm -hmm. um, and then we take twelve months old for starters. Once they hit 18 months old, they're allowed to go into full open competition, which means no netting, and they have to fire the box. Right. So I'm just going to cough. <coughs> Sorry. So it's, it's obviously competitive. You know, like I say, I've, I've only ever seen it at various shows around and crufts and things like that. How does the whole competitive structure work? Um, 
it, it can get very, very competitive in the ring, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, we're there to have fun. Mm -hmm. What we instill is when we're in the ring, when we finish racing, we always thank the opposition, always thank the judge. Because without the opposition, without the judge, we don't race. Mm -hmm. We do get on well in the ring with other with other clubs. Mm -hmm. We yeah. meet clubs from all over the UK. We've even met clubs from the continent that we, we, we've got oh, really? a friendship with. Right. It's a very, very social sport. Because right. we go away camping on the weekend. You get to know people. You race against the same team. Two or three competitions running. You have some banter in the ring as well. Right, yeah. So we make it fun. Yeah, oh, fantastic. Because at the end of the day, we're all there for the same thing to have fun. Yeah. Is it a UK league then that you, you're part of? Or is it an area well, league? What, well, what we... What, with members of two associations, there was a split September last year. There's originally there was the British Global Association with members of that, mm -hmm. and then we've also joined the other association, the UK Global League. Right. We can when we go to the British Global Championships and the UK Global League Championship, we can race against teams from Scotland, the Isle of Man. Two years ago, we went to the European Championships in Ipswich, and we raced against teams from Germany, Belgium, Poland. Wow! So that that was that was one hell of an experience. I, I bet it was truly international. Yeah, it must be great meeting people from all around the world with the same interests. Yeah, we've got. I met a lady from South Africa that came over for the European Championship just to observe, uh -huh. and I've got a really good friendship with her now, and we 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 exchange tips right. via Facebook. Right, okie dokie. Wow, so, it, it sounds really exciting, the whole, the whole scene. I didn't realise it was such a big scene, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the biggest growing uh, canine sport in the UK. Right, okie dokie. Massive growth. So, you know, if I turned up to, to your club with a dog which was, say, 12 months old, how long would it be before I could, you know, get... Do you have, like, A, a B, C teams, or how does that all work within your club? Well, what we, what we do, we do a starters course. Mm. It's a 6 it's a six lesson course, um, and we run through it's like an introduction to flyball. Right. Say, say for instance, a dog looks promising, that dog and the handler will be invited to join the club. Right. Um, it's done via our committee now. Um, okay. Because we have a full membership, mm -hmm. we have to do everything via, via our committee. Right. The committee will convene us and start the school saying, yeah, this dog looks good, that dog, you don't know. Right. Um, yeah. And then. It could be anything between six months, 12 months, we've got some dogs, two years down the line, still only in start, I'm going to pull open property. Right. A dog can take a different time, a uh, different time to learn how to do it properly. Yeah, yeah. But we will only put a dog in full open competition when they're, what we call the box turn, where they fire the fire and box. Mm. We'll only put them in full open competition when they're ready. If they haven't got a pop box turn, we won't put them in full open competition. Right. Okay. We've okay. still got a couple of dogs that are like two years down the line and still not doing a proper box. So we won't put them in close because it's too, it, it, it will damage damage the joint. So, so there is definitely a, a big competitive aspect to this, and you've obviously got to look after the health of the dogs. Yeah, um, we've taken a, a big leap forward in the last month or so. Um, we've got one of our teams have broken into the eighteen second category. Right. Based on 130 from the British Flyball Association rankings. Right. Another one of our teams are almost there. It could possibly happen in a couple of weeks' time. Right. Sorry, what, what's this ranking? Is that like a handicapping for the dogs, or is it? Uh... No, it's um, you have a you have your um seed time, mm -hmm. um, which is your quickest time in the last three months of a competition, mm -hmm. um, and they're graded. So basically, the quickest will get them. The quickest in, in the British Flyball Association will get the first top ranking. Mm. The slowest one we get the bottom rank. Oops. Oops. Sorry, my phone just dropped. <laughs> uh, we'll get the same. We'll, we'll, the same in the UK Flyball League as well. Right. Um, but that's very much. There's only 200 teams registered mm. in the UK Flyball League, whereas there's at the moment I think it's almost 500 in the season in the British Flyball Association. Right. Okie dokie. So essentially, that whatever team, whatever team you put in, is it? And sorry, how many's in a team? Is it four? Or? Uh, there are six, 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 six dogs in the squad. Right. Only four can make at any one time. Right. Okie dokie. Um, but we have different team names. They're, they're sub team names. We have um, Force of Thought, Force for a Moment, Force on the Go, the Elk Lakes, Bucks, the Bandits. We can interchange the dogs in those teams mm. to suit which ones are available. Right. Okie dokie. So you're not kind of limited to 
dogs of a certain standard competing against other dogs of a certain standard or, or anything like that. It's just completely open. No, we can interchange them in the teams. Right, okay. Um, okay. But, but yeah, as I say, you have your seat time. You race against teams in a similar seat time to those that you've got. Okay. So what are, the, what are the rules, as far as I can see? Judge blows a whistle and everything goes mental for about <laughs> a minute and then it calms down. Dogs run up and down. But what it, what it is, uh, um, when we're at a competition, um, there will be a set of laser beam start gates, mm-hmm. same, similar to skiing, mm-hmm. and a set of start lights. Right. The first dog will go, the aim is to get the first dog through the start gate when the, when the, the start through the start gate when the start light turns green. Right. Um, the dog then goes down, fires the box, has to fire the box to get the ball, go over the four jump, fire the box to get the ball, bring it back over the four jump, come back through the start gate, mm. and the next dog goes. Mm. But when we're in training, we aim to get those dogs within one foot of each other, so the dog coming out has got to break the laser beam before the dog going in. Right, okie dokie. Because I guess if you let so them go the, too early, the, it's foul or... Yeah, but if you get a fault light, like, that dog has to run again. Right. So the so, so so it's not a case of the quickest team; it's a case of the quickest team with no faults. Right. Okie dokie. Oh, I I see. So yeah, what have you got coming up this? Se- when does the season run to and from? Never does. All right. It's ongoing. Twelve months a year. Okay. We're at Somerset this weekend. Uh-huh. Uh We've got four open teams, two staff teams. Mm. Whilst we mentor a team from Somerset who've got two teams in. Mm-hmm. Um, next weekend, it's we're at Wokingham. Mm-hmm. Uh, we only have two open teams in because of availability. Mm-hmm. And then next month, we're at Peterborough, Stoke on August, we've got the UK Flyball League Championships and the British Flyball League, uh, British Flyball Association Championships. Right. Right. And at the start of September, we're co hosting a competition in sorry, Norfolk. Mm. With a new team that started up there. Wow! So you can, you, it's all consuming then. You spend every weekend. Yeah, so when it, it, yeah, so when it gets to basically of October, we start racing indoors. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So where, whereabouts do you do it round here? Where, where's the? Uh, are there any indoor racing arenas around Banbury? The nearest one we get is at Ryton at Coventry. Right. Um, but we can go. We we went to Bisley this uh, this year. We've been to um, Peterborough. Mm-hmm. Um, the busy one was a long day. Right, I, I, very, very. <laughs> but because we enjoy racing, we're prepared to do it. So, um, and what sort? Of, you know, we were talking about you know what age you can do it from. What sort of age do you do it to? What's the oldest dogs that you get out there? We have one dog called Wallace. He's been doing it two years. He's 12, 12 years old today. Really? Wow. Yeah, and he loves it. He loves it. Um, a, is it a border collie or? He's a, he's, a, he's a crossbreed, border collie cross, I think, with a Labrador. Right, okie dokie. <laughs> but he was always an agility dog, and he came on one of our starter courses and loved it so much, and his owner, Annette, loved it so much. She said, I want to do it. Oh, brilliant. Good for him. That's, that's impressive. So it's 12, what's that, 84 in our years? Yeah. Still out there doing it. It's hope for us all. He's cracking, cracking dog. He just loves it. Oh, brilliant. I'd love to see that. Um... I mean, with regards to sort of older dogs, do you have much of an injury problem? You know, are there issues with dogs that maybe have, you know, because obviously some collies have problems with hips and elbows and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, is that much of an issue? Or do you do preventative care for them? Or What we what we find is as long as the dog has got a proper box turn, mm-hmm. which is a swimmer turn, they tend to avoid injury more. Right. Okay. Um, Why well, is that? Is it when have, you say a swimmer's turn? Is it are they how how are they trying to turn to avoid injury? Well, what what we do with the box turn is we actually start the box training with a we, we, we call it training tube, mm. and it's got five different set, pipe settings on it. We start on on the lowest setting, so it's flat, mm. and just train the dog to go round on all four paws and just give them the ball of the reward. If they don't go round with all four paws, they don't get the ball of the reward. Ah, uh, okay. Then we. Once they've mastered that, then we lift it up to four, five different settings, and then we transfer them onto the firing box. Okay, so you're trying to distribute the weight through the four paws rather than just through the, the two paws. Yeah. yeah. We see some of the dogs will go down to the box, the firing box, and they will only use front two paws, which is such a, a strain on the shoulders. Yeah, yeah, I bet. I bet. And w- with regards to that, I mean, outside 
like going up to the boxes is there any other training that that people do with them just to get them fit enough because it looks like a really high impact high energy sport what we what we do sometimes we will do uh, a fitness night and we will set out eight jumps no box mm-hmm. and we will just put them eight jumps in a line and just keep on going up and down up and down up and down over the jumps so like just build a fitness and the stamina just like any athlete i suppose yeah. Yeah. But we what we do when we're at competition, even if, even at training, we warm the dogs up and we cool them down as well. Right. They're they're home athletes. Mm. You wouldn't see a hundred meter sprinter just take his track suit off and go and do the hundred meters. They oh. warm up, we warm the dogs up and when we finish we also cool them down as well. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. tend to look after them well, put it this way, structurally, they see the chiropractor every six weeks. Oh really? Yeah, the chiropractor comes from Birmingham. Mm. Um, and she will see a dozen, a dozen dogs at a time, mm. and she'll put them all back into place and make sure they're hundred percent fit. Right, right, yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that's really, really, really good to hear. Um, and with regards to you know the sport for the, the owners, I mean, it sounds like you know you have to commit to weekends and things like that. Are there any other big costs? You know, you know, costs of entry or cost of buying kit or anything specialised well, like the- that. I mean, the cost of entry is very, it's quite reasonable. Mm. We will pay anything between £40 and £50 for a team, mm-hmm. which we, if the four dogs or six dogs, you split, the, you split the cost between your team. And camping is usually anything between £8 and £10 a night. Really? So it's very, it's very inexpensive. Oh, that is very inexpensive, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So how many people in the club now? I mean, you're full at the moment. Uh, we've got, well, we've got about 30, 30 members at the moment that are actively training and racing. Right. Okay. Um, some of the members, some of the members don't don't race. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, myself and my wife Lisa got three border collies. We have two that race, mm-hmm. one that only trains with noise sensitive. We have a couple of other dogs that are either noise sensitive or can be reactive, so they only train. Right. So they only come for the fun of it. Right. No competing. Wow. You see, it all sounds really interesting. Thank, thanks very much for that, uh, Gordon. Yeah, I thought Not that, that was re- really interesting. Like I say, coming into it tonight, I, I really didn't know much about it, but I feel as though, yeah, I've uh, I've really been enlightened. Thank, thanks very much for uh, speaking to me about this. Yeah, we well, have to pop along to training one day. I'd love to come and see it. Yeah, that'd be great. You'll have to send me the... What, what nights do you, do you train? Well, we... During the summer, we tend to have hit and miss training. Sometimes it will be a Sunday, and we'll start at ten in the morning, finish at six at night. We'll right. be over Farisham in the field all day. Right. We'll have dogs come and go at various times. Um, sometimes we do weekday evenings, like next Wednesday evening, we're over at Farisham in the field. Right. Half past six onwards. Right. Just a okay. light training session. Yeah, oh, I'd love to come um, along and see. And that. then during the winter, during the winter, it's Sunday nights over at um, Shotswell. Oh, yeah. Valley Farm, yeah, 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 which is an indoor, it's an indoor venue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I know. I've got lurchers. Are they, are they any good? They can be very, very quick. <laughs> if you get a good one, they are brilliant. If you get one that can be very skittish, then they can be a bit of a handful to train. But once you once you instill it, they can do very well. Oh really? Oh, I have to bring. I'll bring Moss along. He can have a look anyway and <laughs> see what he thinks. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thanks ever so much for that, Gordon. I really appreciate you taking the time out to, to speak to me about this. It's really kind of you, of your evening. Not a problem. All right, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, John. Cheers now, Gordon. See you now. Bye.